my friend Curtis was in the Vietnam War and really came home. I think probably what was as traumatic as the war itself was the coming home. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And first you said, hey, I can, I can sing my testimony. Yes, sir. And then I just want to pester you with some questions. And so I'm going to let you sing it. And um, we've already gotten to talk. And I love, love, love first your heart and what God's done in your heart. And um, I think God's going to be blessed or people are going to be blessed by what you have to share. No, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I'm not singing testimony. Amazing grace will always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberal tea. I never knew just why Christ came to love me so. He looked beyond my thoughts and saw my needs. I shall forever live. I to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous that grace that caught my fallen soul. He will be young. I fall and so my knees. Wow, I love it. Well, tell me about Vietnam, my friend. Vietnam was a bittersweet for the pastor. Uh, I was supposed to be there. I was supposed to see what I saw. And God wanted me to see that and He wanted to bring me back. I saw a lot of deaths, a lot of my friends died, me having to put them in body bags and stuff. Um, to me, that was a negative. Yeah. But I had to see that in order for God to use me. That's my testimony. I feel like it's unique because uh, I was brought up in a Christian family. I didn't have an idea that my journey would take me like it did. You know, I thought everything would be just on a smooth scale. But when God intervened in your life, you don't have any, you can't call the shots. You know, he, sometimes he uses the harshest situations to get your attention. Uh, I don't know if that was my case uh, or not, but I saw stuff that have haunted me for years. I did things that have haunted me for years. You know, I've taken lives, I've seen lives lost. And I had a lot of questions before I really became a Christian, you know. God is a good God, but this hurts. Why did he why would he let me see this? Right. You know, he's, he's God all by himself. You know, he carried me through all of that. He didn't carry me around it. He carried me through the storm. Mm -hmm. You know, even now as I speak, it, it really hurt, but I know it, it helped. Because it, it have helped me releasing. Right. And uh, I've been dealing with this for a long time. You know. 
I think this is a season God's chosen to set you free. Yes, sir. Sharing with you from Exodus where it says, I brought you on eagle's wings to myself. Yes. I think God has picked you up and is carrying you to himself. I guess I see God shining through you all the time. Yeah, he's, he's covered me. You know, it's, it's, when I was in Vietnam, it seemed like I had a shield around me. You know, I mean, I'm there with everyone else that's dying, and here I am standing, you know. I used to hear voices say, I keep you, I save you. Over all the bonds and the bullets, I heard that voice just clear saying, I keep you and I save you. That's what you heard God tell you, I yes. keep you, I save you. I didn't know, you know, how are you going to save me from all this? I'm looking at people who died and fallen. <laughs> but he yeah. have. You know, you've carried me through all of everything. Right. Storm, rain, ups, downs. So he's been right there. Right. I, you know, I didn't know how close he was until... Mm -hmm. I started using him. You know, it was kind of like he said, well, you know, I've been here all the time. I just haven't been accessing him. Yes. Yeah. You know, he knew what I was going through, but I had to reach out. You told me you grew up in a Christian home. Yes, sir. But that's not where it became real for you. No. It became real when I went to Vietnam and on my way back. That's when God's presence really started showing up in my life, you know. Uh, you know, God had saved me in so many ways. I, I really didn't know what was happening to me. You know, I, I never knew how God was working in my life. You know, but different situations that I've been in and I've come out, you know, I just thought it was coincidence, you know. But nothing happened without God's permission. You told me a story about a friend of yours that was in Vietnam with you and then he was a preacher. Yes. And I was hopeful you would tell me that story. Yes. Again. This neighborhood friend of mine, uh, brought up in the same neighborhood, I saw him one day and uh, I, I knew something was different about him, but I, I didn't know what. He looked the same, but it was just his mannerism was different. And uh, as he approached me, I, I guess I was staring at him and he said, What's the matter? I said, you know, I, I don't know. It's something about you. He said, oh. He said, well, uh, I'm preaching my first sermon uh, uh, tomorrow. He said, I would like for you to come and sing. I didn't tell him, but that's what was different. He had a, a certain look about him that wasn't the same as I knew him. You could tell just looking at him that something yeah, had changed. Something had changed, yeah. you know. Uh, and we talked, and he said, well, he asked me if I was still going to the same church, the same neighborhood church. And I said, yes. He said, uh, have you accepted Christ? I said, yes. He said, have you really accepted Christ? I said, yes, I think so. He said, well, let's read a scripture. And we read the scripture, Romans 9 and 10, where if you confess with your mouth, you accept Christ. When I read that, I, I was crying. I, I felt the chill come over me. And I think that's where it, you know, I really release uh, myself from me. Yeah. God start using me then. You know, I've, I've been on a different type of journey ever since then. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing I've been the same.
he said to me, and I really like that line, I had to release me from me. Yes, I did. Uh, Before God could use me, I had just give it up, stop trying to manipulate the situation, you know, trying to be comfortable. I just had to surrender, totally surrender, mm -hmm. and be honest, not almost surrendering, just totally surrender and say, God, I'm dependent on you. <laughs> when we talked about you coming home from Vietnam and just the turmoil, the inner turmoil that you were in. You you described that situation where you came to Christ, you really came to Christ, and were set free. But then you also told me about how the Bible changed your life, just reading God's Word. Yes. Hoping you'd share that with the church, too. The wife I have now, through our short courtship, we started doing, uh, she was doing devotion. And I had never done devotion before. And uh, she invited me to do devotion with her. And I did. I accepted the invitation. And the next day, we done the same thing and over and over again. Uh, devotion for me was, uh, uh, it keeps me grounded. Uh, it. Uh, it strengthened me. It keeps me grounded and keep, it strengthened me also that, uh, you know, God is, God is God all by himself. I mean, it's nothing that's impossible for him. Absolutely right. nothing. Right. You know, you may think it is, but until you start using God and letting God use you, you realize, uh, what else, who else would I want to turn to? God is awesome. Now you told me you and your wife do a devotional. Not sometimes, you've got a rhythm. What, what, what's that rhythm? After I wake up in the morning. I love it. Set my feet on the ground, I wash my face. We grab our Bible. Before we have coffee, have anything, we start our devotion. We pray, we start our devotion. Uh, I've been doing this uh, ever since 1995. Wow, wow. And uh, I, w I, don't, I wouldn't know how to live my life without doing devotion. Mm. Now, do you skip a day? I haven't ever skipped a day. <laughs> I love it. I also do my own personal devotion after uh -huh. we do our devotion together. I go in my little area and, you know, Ask the thing that's, that's totally on, on my heart. Right. And uh, that have really kept me grounded, you know. I, I don't know how to do anything else right now. You know, I'm coming up on 75 and on the 18th of June, and uh, God has totally blessed me. Yeah. Yeah. He's blessed by me by getting to know you. Well, you know, God has blessed me through sickness, health, you know, uh, I may look physical, I feel healthy, spiritually healthy, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, I've, I've had so many operations and, mm -hmm. and everything that, you know, my, my physical body is, is a wreck, right. you know. Right. So God have carried me and he'll continue to carry me until I'm no longer here, Amen. you know. And, Tell me what you would like to say most to young men coming home from, some of them from combat, some of them just from being overseas. Is there something from a man who served this country in Vietnam uh, that you would say to our troops coming home? Yes, sir. First of all, the young guys that haven't even left the States yet, I would like to say to them, get grounded in the Word totally get grounded in the Word. Because at some point in your military life, totally in your uh, civilian life, you're going to find that you're going to need God. You're going to need to be in the Word. You're going to know what Scripture says what. 
uh, it's a scripture for everything. Amen. And you're going to know how to quote those scriptures to yourself and maybe to others mm -hmm. that don't even know God. Uh, you know, Pastor, when you go in service, you're totally broken down to be a man, to be a soldier. Uh, you have to have something to lean on during those times. You know, uh, when you go overseas and come back, you're a totally different person. I don't care what branch you're in, uh, what area you serve in. You're going to have to know God. Mm. You're going to have to know what God can do for you and what you can do for God. What you can do for God is totally surrender. Just give Him your life. Turn your life over. He can't use you like you are. <laughs> when you turn your life over to God, It's a new world. You have a new destination. You don't have anything to do with it. You don't have to give up anything but yourself. And I, I know you're not a military wife, but is there something you would say to the wives? In, in, yes. We, I mean, we're in a military culture, a yes. military church, yes. um, surrounded by, by young people. Um, who are seeing what the rest of the country doesn't see. Yes, back to the devotion. It's a family thing. It's not a, a husband thing, a wife thing. It's a family thing. Uh, once you start it and be honest and truthful, it's hard to turn back. But it strengthens your family in every area, absolutely every area. Uh, that's what it have done for me. Uh, the person that leaves home and go overseas, when they come back, they're not the same. It's up to how you live your life with Christ, how you perceive Him. Was that hard on your family when you came back and you were yes. different? Yes. No one understood me. I didn't understand myself. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I was hurting. And I didn't know how to say I'm hurting because I felt like they wouldn't understand. They, they wasn't there. And that's the hardest thing for a soldier to relate to his family. Right. You don't, you wasn't there. You wouldn't understand what I had to tell you, what I had to do. For me to tell you, I would have to relive it. Yes. And you don't want to. You don't want to relive it. It's a, it's a sore with a scab on it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you don't want to keep taking that scab off, so you camouflage. You know, you become a person who want to work all the time, or stay away from home, or be wise. You know, and uh, you have to seek God to understand how do I reach my husband? How do I reach my son? You know, man can't tell you how to do that. Right. You have to fall on your knees and ask God for whatever you want. You know, my parents didn't do that. I didn't ask God for them to understand me mm -hmm. because I didn't, I was by myself, you know. What would you say that when it came to you coming home and you were bitter, you were hurt, and then God started that process of of bringing you to himself through the preacher, through the word. Is there anything you would say, wow, this is what God used most to get me over bitterness? I know he's doing it too. When I saw God working through my sickness, plagued, as you have preached about Pharaoh, uh, my plagues was uh, my health. Uh, you know, you say, Oh, this could never happen to me, uh, uh, you know, maybe the other person. And you see people dying of things that you have, have uh, 
just come through with nothing, you know. You so at some point you have to wonder, you know, wow, why, why me? Right. You know, uh, God gets your attention however you want to get it, you know. Yeah. And uh, He have brought me through things that I can look back and say, well, you know, not boasting, but I say, wow, you know, I'm glad I know God. Glad God is on the side. I was just thinking about what God said to you in the, I'm assuming the jungles of Vietnam. Um, I save you, I keep you. And was he faithful to that? Was I faithful? No, was he faithful to that? <laughs> totally. Amen. Totally, Pastor. Amen. Yeah, I, you know, I've been away from Vietnam a, quite a long time and I still hear that voice. I, you know, it's several things that have happened in my Christian life that I still reminisce on because it, it keeps me grounded, you know. I mean, Satan is still after me, you know. Yeah. But when I think about how good God has been to me and the thing that he has carried me through, you know, he's, he's God, you know. There's a, there's a most of this I'm interested in just as your pastor, but there's some stuff I just want to ask as an American, yes. if I can. I know that it was bad when you came home. Um, the, the state of the country toward the Vietnam vets yes. was not good. We, we were not welcoming you home with open arms. Thank you for, has the country changed for the positive or the negative? Hmm. Well, I don't, let me answer this that truthfully. Please. Um, <laughs> they, the 60s, as you say, wasn't a good year for being overseas, especially in Vietnam. Mm. And uh, it's a lot of negative. Uh, the country should have learned uh, by that, but in the back of my mind, I, you know, you, you done whatever you had to do for your country and you came back and, you know, you was labeled, you know, baby killers, uh, you know, this and that. But, you know, as a young guy, that's what a soldier had to do to survive, you know. And uh, you didn't ask to be in Vietnam. Some of us asked to go to Vietnam, but, uh, you didn't ask for the situations, right. you know. Uh, as when I was there, <coughs> excuse me. When I was there, I found out on my way back that Vietnam was more of a political war, you know, because the people was caring, loving, and the the people of Vietnam. People in Vietnam were very caring and loving. You know, had not been for some of the kids there, I probably wouldn't be here. They, you know, told me it was that area that we was in, it was a lot of enemies and this and that. So I relayed that to my CO, and sometimes he listened, sometimes he didn't. But uh, I don't think the country have learned uh, From any war, just being honest with you, you know. Please. Yeah, yeah. you know, was was hell. I mean, you know, I I don't, I don't think they've learned because it's, us as America always have a, another agenda. You know, we we'll help you, but you know that that's wrong. You know, I mean. Uh, I wouldn't wish war on anyone. Military is is a good place to be. It teaches you a lot of values that you wouldn't ordinarily get. But war, I, I, war don't have any place. How old were you when you went to Vietnam? Turning seventeen. Yeah, seventeen. A, a kid. You yes, were a kid. Sir. Yes, sir. So you've lived, you've lived all of your adult life with Vietnam as part of you. Yeah. Yes, two tours. And two tours. I'm, so many ways, I'm still feel myself living it. You know, uh, you know, surviving. 
Right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I can't let my guard down. No. You know, that's when I have to stay grounded in the Word and just, I don't have any choice. What else would you like to share? I hope this message, or this testimony, my testimony would, is someone out there that's hurting just like me. I don't care whether you're a veteran, uh, uh, young guy getting ready to go overseas, you know. First thing I would say is get into the Word before you go. Get into the Word while you are still young, let God use you. Uh, be sincere, you know. Uh, be sincere in everything you do, your, your approach. If you go, if you use your military life, the same as you use your your Christian use your Christian life the same as you use your military life, you won't have any problem. But if you don't, you will find yourself leaning leaning on Christ. Sometime it may be a little too late. You know, so let God use you while He can. Now you've mentioned several times that the Bible is the foundation. God's word is the foundation. My foundation, yes, sir. For you. And you read it every day. every day. I just want to pester you on this every as your day. pastor. Uh, how much do you, do you read a chapter a day, a half a chapter? Uh, what, what's your rhythm? We, we uh, pick a scripture out. We read the daily bread. Uh -huh. Then we pick a scripture out. And uh, we read that. And then we have devotion on that. And uh, I do my own little devotion as, you know, as, uh, before my day start after I get through with my wife. And I'm quite sure she do her little prayer too. We, you know, just do little separate uh, things. And has this brought you together spiritually as well? I think so. We, yeah, coming up on 20 years. <laughs> so that's awesome. That's awesome. I've never known anyone. <laughs> yeah. But coming up on 20 years, you know, it's been give and take. But uh, we complement each other. We are different day and night. I, I want you to know that as your friend and your pastor. I'm so proud of you because many people would be defeated. They'd be defeated by what they saw. They would be defeated by the, the things that you went through. They, they come back and they become alcoholics. They become obsessed with women. They become um, focused on all the stuff that, and they're trying, to, they're trying to get rid of that hurt. And you've come and you've said, you know what? I gave that hurt to the Lord. That's, that's when you have to stay grounded. I mean, you know, uh, if you don't, you know, you'll become one of those people, an alcoholic, a drug addict, or whatever, you, you become all of them. Right. But you, you have to stay grounded. The Word is the only way you can stay focused. That's the only, only life, really, that you need to live. Everything else is secondary, you know. Anything, anything else you'd like to share? Just take this testimony to heart. I mean, it's, Amen. you know, it's... I don't have anything to gain by telling you anything wrong. I'm, I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about the young soldiers right now. That don't know God. He's, Satan is no joke. You have to get into the Word, and you have to be sincere. For you and your families. That's really all I have to say. Amen. Amen. Can I pray with you? Yes, sir. Lord, I love this man. I love him. Thank you for using him. Thank you for not leaving him. But you, you keep him, you save him. And you did. You saved him in the jungles of Vietnam, and you've kept him by your side. And when Satan wanted to destroy him, as he said, Satan's no joke. When Satan wanted to destroy him, you saved him. Yes. And you didn't just save his body. Yes. He got over here and you saved his soul. Yes. And you saved him spiritually that he go to heaven, but you saved him from bitterness. Yes. You saved him from the misery yes. that others are trying to medicate. And you've right. been his medicine. Right. You've been the balm that he said over and over and over to us, this church family, that the word of God has the power to heal us. Yes. And I pray that he wouldn't be alone in this journey, but that out of inspiration, many other people would join him in, um, in reading your word and taking comfort in your word, whether they're overseas or right here at home or with someone they love. We pray your word would be our foundation. Thank you for my friend Curtis, God. In Jesus' name, amen.
Uh, 17, almost 18, and uh, and RPGs, B-40s, bullets flying, and to hear a voice over all the noise, you know. Yeah, and uh, my men, I was just about to get up. We was we had sniper fire. He was just picking us off one by one. You know, we went in. It's an area called the uh, Humane Forest. This was in Vietnam in, in the jungle, and it was a stronghold. And uh, we went in, knew it was a stronghold. That was my mission, go and search and destroy. In the stronghold, uh, we expected a lot of firepower and stuff, but uh, we got pinned down. And uh, there's no way you can get dusted off in the jungle, you know. And uh, Charlie was just, I mean, he was just shooting us right and every time he, somebody got up to try to find out something, he just pick them off. Mm. Just in a split moment, you know, hearing voices say, I save you, I keep you. I told my men, I said, I, you know, I didn't have any choice. I said, I got to find out what the sniper fire. When I made up my mind to get up, that's when the help started coming. No, I mean, it wasn't none of my doing, you know, but. I made up my mind. I was down to, out of a 20 round clip, I was down to probably about six bullets. And uh, I said, you know, whatever it takes, I gotta find out where the sniper coming from. When I made up my mind to get up, that's when all the help, you know, uh, artillery and everything came in. I didn't have to do what I had to do. But, uh, you know, that's when I know God is good, you know. I can only tell you guys, you know, God is really good. He's, he's been good to me. And uh, for me to get this off my chest, you guys just don't know. You know, it's, uh, it's been a chore for me to camouflage it. I tell you, all of my life, you know, my wife don't know so many things I've said in here. You know, to be a family man and be honest, you know, if you're a Christian, you're supposed to be honest, you know. And uh, I let her listen to this, and that'll be a closure in me being dishonest, you know, in my in my parent. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Thank <laughs> you.